Hey guys, Brad here from Scooter Street. Look, today we're going to talk about auto chokes, specifically auto choke problems, because uh, we do get a lot of questions about auto choke problems because they do commonly fail. Now, most people are fairly familiar with what a choke does. It helps you cold start an engine. But um, what a lot of people don't know is that depending on what has failed in your auto choke, it can actually negatively affect more than just that first couple of minutes of cold starting. Depending on how it's filed, it can actually cause you running problems even when the engine's hot. Now to make things simpler, I have an auto choke just here. Now um, essentially the basis of the use of a choke, when an internal combustion engine is cold, say for instance the engine in a scooter, it needs more fuel to run properly. Once it's warmed up, it can run really well on less fuel. So the job of a choke is to, when the engine is cold, allow more fuel in, and then once the engine has warmed up, it can then switch that additional supply off. Now this is the same whether it's an auto choke or a manual choke, they do the same thing. Uh, just a manual choke does it by a manual switch that um, uh, the operator has to turn on and off, and an auto choke does this automatically. Now the way that this mechanism works, uh, there's a fuel gallery in, uh, in the carb, and um, uh, it has essentially a little, um, a little tip. Now, you might see this little rubber in here. Um, when the choke is in the closed position, this little tube slides down and closes off that tip, closing off the additional fuel supply um, to choke the engine or to make it richer. When this little tube, uh, this little brass tube slides up, the little seal in there pulls away from the tip and allows more fuel into the engine. So essentially, when the brass is up, it's in the open position. When the brass is down, it's in the closed position. And again, this is the same for an auto or a manual choke. Now you might see this little cable here and you think, oh, how does this mechanism work? Basically, in, on the inside of here is pretty much the same as a thermostat in a car. So has what essentially amounts to a small thermometer uh, is the best way to explain it. Now, um, when the choke itself is uh, cold, uh, this little tube will slide up into the body which uh, if it's in the bike means the choke is in the open position. When the little thermometer in here is hot, then uh, the, uh, the brass tube slides down to the closed position. So what this little cable here does, on top of having essentially a small thermostat in here, um, it also has a small coil. So when you turn your key on to start your engine, uh, it, uh, the bike supplies power uh, to, this, uh, to this little ch choke cable, which heats the choke up. Now, say you turn your key on, you start your engine. The idea is that power is being supplied to this. So um, because it's starting to heat up, the choke's going to start to uh, move out and close off. So as soon as you start your bike, the choke's already starting to heat up and already starting to close off. Now, uh, this process should take about two minutes. It should take about two minutes of your engine running for the choke to heat up enough that it then closes off the choke fuel gallery. This is perfect. It means for the first two minutes of your running of your engine, uh, the choke is open, and then about two minutes in, it's then in the closed position, which means that you can start your engine well. Um, it'll start up no problems. Uh, it'll run rich for a couple of minutes, which is exactly what you need, and then the choke will automatically close itself off, meaning uh, you can you can ride around town with uh, a nice warm engine running really well on the correct amount of fuel. Now, when your auto choke fails, it will generally manifest in two different symptoms. Now, because it's a switch, it has two positions, if it gets stuck, which is what generally tends to happen when your choke fails, it's going to get stuck in one of two positions, open or closed. Now, if it gets stuck in the closed position, um, your bike's going to be very difficult to cold start because the choke is closed. It can't open, which means you're never getting that additional uh, supply of fuel to run the engine when it's cold. Now, if it gets stuck in the open position, this is probably less common, but far more difficult to diagnose. When it gets stuck in the open position, the bike will start and run beautifully for about two minutes, uh, and then it will, um, uh, it will be really, really spluttery, um, blowing lots of smoke, uh, running really rich, essentially, because it's getting that additional supply of fuel from the choke that it doesn't need when it's warm. So um, uh, the bike will commonly, uh, if, if this failure has occurred, it'll run really spluttery, be blowing lots of smoke, um, it'll be fouling uh, spark plugs up really black and sooty because it's just running far, far too rich. Now, if you suspect you're having a choke issue, there are a couple of ways that you can go about diagnosing this. Now, one common way that we use in the shop um, is uh, to pull the auto choke from the scooter and to measure from the end of the black plastic tube uh, of the choke to the tip of the plunger, which is the brass piece. Measure that, write that value down, 
put the choke in the freezer for half an hour. Now when you get the choke back out of the freezer, quickly measure again that same measurement. Now if the choke is working properly, that measurement when you get it out of the freezer should be shorter. Because if the choke is cold, it should have withdrawn back into itself, uh, in, this, in essence opening up the choke gallery. If it hasn't done that, or it's done it only a couple of mil, um, your choke's not working properly, uh, or it's not working enough, which also is a very common occurrence. That the choke is functioning, but say it should open 10 mil, it might only be opening two or three, and it's not enough to open up the choke gallery enough, um, or close it off to get the choke to work properly. Now, there is, in my opinion, another easier method of diagnosing an auto choke problem, and that's by replacing the auto choke with a manual choke and seeing if the same problem manifests. Now, the reason that I say this is an easier method, uh, it doesn't involve putting anything in the freezer. It's literally two bolts to replace this, uh, and then because you can uh, operate the choke manually, you can be absolutely assured uh, of whether the issue is the auto choke not functioning properly or whether there's some other issue going on with your carb. We have our shop zip behind me, which Piaggio zip. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to replace it, show you how easy it is uh, on these because they have the access panel under the seat. Generally, you can just uh, uh, get to those two screws that hold the auto choke from under the seat. Uh, and it's, honestly, it's probably about a 10 minute job flat out. I'm going to show you how to do it. This is your manual choke kit just here. Obviously, you get the actual choke uh, mechanism itself. You notice that the manual choke doesn't have that little spike. That little spike is essentially just a guide, uh, which, uh, which these don't need. Um, you have your little um, C-clip or circlip um, that slides around this little um, uh, slot in the top of it. Well, it's, it's a slot in the auto choke, and it's just a little cap on the manual choke. And you have your two screws. Now, if there's nothing wrong with the, um, the circlip and the screws on your factory engine, there's no reason that you need to replace them. But uh, it is good that the kit comes with them just in case you do need them. Right, come to our zip. Got some stuff under the seat. Pull that out. Now, essentially what we're going to be doing is uh, popping these two screws here out and getting access to the top of the carb through that little inspection panel. Okay, there's the top of our carb, and you see right here is the top of our auto choke. Okay, so to make it easy, this little top piece here is just a plastic cap. You're going to see there's one screw for the circlip, and the other screw you might not be able to see, oh, they're just right there. So those are the two screws going to be taking out. Uh, on this one, they're flat heads, so I'm going to go ahead and pop them out, and um, then we'll uh, basically just be disconnecting this um, choke wire just here. Be disconnecting that one and uh, pop the auto choke out. Now that we've got both of our screws out, just going to disconnect the choke cable. There, one little plug. Then we're going to just pop our choke out. Now, when you do this, just be careful because there is a little circlip down there. You don't want that to fall down uh, and for it to get lost is our little metallic part, very easy to lose. Now, because there's nothing wrong with our uh, factory circlip here, I'm just gonna pop it out and I'm gonna reuse it on the manual choke. Now you see, on the auto choke, it actually has a nice little recess um, for the circlip. On our manual choke, it literally just sits over top, like that. So, because it's not quite as, uh, as secured into the choke when there's no screws in it, you will just have to be a little bit more careful when you put the, um, the manual choke back into the bike that it doesn't uh, fall off. Let's go chuck this in. Now what you will want to do, which I won't do on camera, you're going to want to take this little uh, 12 volt line, probably put a small piece of electrical tape over it and cable tie it up somewhere out of the way because um, if you do want to go back to using an auto choke, you will want to um, have that one available. Don't go cutting the cables or anything because um, like, it is still a live 12 volt line and uh, you're going to create yourself a short if you just go and uh, snip those off. Now uh, one advantage, because the clip goes over the top of the choke, is that you can sit the choke in position, you're going to push it all the way down. Uh, I would usually have uh, the lever facing out the way that it's most accessible on this particular bike because it's uh, totally stock. I've got the airbox on the way here, so I probably don't want the choke on this side. It's going to be far more accessible if we have it over this side. We can just creep in over top of the mudguard and um, flick the uh, little cable to operate it. Okay, we're going to sit our circlet in position. Let's make sure you've pushed your choke all the way down. All right, we've got both our screws in. It's uh, sitting nice. The actual mechanism's working fairly nicely. 
So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start the bike. Now, I've got the choke in the off position. I've done this deliberately because I want to show you what a bike with a choke that's not functioning properly uh, sounds like when you try to start it. Even giving it throttle, just throttle just doesn't want to start. See, it's just kind of wanting to start, but not really. No. All right, now let's go ahead, open the choke lever. Which how easy it starts now. Straight up. I'm going to take it for a little spin outside, warm it up uh, to the point that the choke can come off. And then I'm going to turn it back on again. I'm going to show you what a bike sounds like when uh, it is warm, but the choke hasn't turned off. So I've warmed this guy up to the point he's just running real, uh, really nice and well with the choke off. I'll just show you. It's running nice and cleanly. No spluttering. No issues. Go ahead and turn that choke back on. So I'm going to open it up. So now the choke's in the open position. All right. Oh, already pretty boggy. Really doughy and slow. Doesn't want to idle either. Real dramas at low throttle. It's will not idle. Yeah. Hardly wants to take off. Oh, and she's gone. Look, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, there was some useful information there if you think that you might have a choke issue on your bike. Um, uh, I just will mention as well, we do have a, um, as well as that uh, manual choke kit, which I've shown in the video, um, we do also have a, a cable uh, operated manual choke, which means that um, it has a cable so you can position the lever to operate the choke in a more convenient position on the bike. Um, if you're probably looking for a more long-term situation rather than just using a, uh, a small uh, switch to diagnose with. Uh, but again, guys, we have all that stuff on our website. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please let us know in the comments. We endeavor to answer every single question. Thanks again, guys.